Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have opened our pop-up video studio here in uh, Leaders in Log Logistics uh, Summit. And uh, inside that event, we have a mini event uh, organized by Block IT, and it calls Block on Tour. So we have gathered today here um, round table about uh, talking about parcel lockers and just to introduce the, the company here uh, my name is Andre Veskimeister I'm the founder of the Parcel Locker Central uh, we have here also Peter Ronda a veteran of the Parcel Locker business uh, from years uh, now we have uh, two co-founders of uh, Block IT uh, Joao Lopez and Miha Jagodic hi guys how are you doing today we're pretty good. Thank you. Thank you for coming, uh, for inviting. Uh, very nice. But uh, I will ignore you as a host uh, for, a, for a start. I will ask you, Peter, uh, uh, where did you uh, make the contact with Block IT guys and, and how, how did this uh, partnership or, or uh, relationship started? So I've been in the industry for, yeah, for more than 12 years. And uh, I, met the, I met the guys in uh, Vienna back in 21. So that was a, I would say that was a startup company at that time. It was like, you know, we want we want to we want to conquer this business, and and they were looking towards everything in, to get any in, in, kind of inspiration for strategy and things like that. So we had pretty good talks on it um, back in 21. Had a couple of meetings and and, and online calls and so on. And then I've followed them since, right? And I've seen you know the development, what they wanted to do actually came through, right? So now we're sitting here. Yeah, but uh, now back to you, uh, Miha. I know that you don't want to call Block IT as a startup. You are, you are calling it as a scale-up company. But tell me the whole story. I think we have viewers who haven't, who haven't heard about you and, and doesn't know. Also, it is very, uh, very few, few of them, but still. The briefly Block IT story. Yeah, sure. Um, it, it's funny, actually, because we've been called uh, just yesterday, right? That's where you probably pick it up. Uh, when I was on stage, I was uh, called a young company, and uh, in the moment, I thought we've been called young company for a very long time. So maybe I'm gonna start changing the narrative and start correcting the people, and uh, kind of trying to next time I'm introducing. There's Block it. It's an established company, right? Uh, but uh, we started basically five years ago first with an idea of uh, building our own locker network. Uh, not only for parcels and for less mile, but something that would really be super multifunctional, including uh, uh, offering the storage function. Uh, but the first hurdle was already very big. Uh, when we wanted to look for a supplier that could actually support our very customizable and uh, very uh, dynamic idea, uh, we couldn't find anything appropriate, not uh, hardware-wise, uh, especially not software-wise. So. Uh, we decided to take a step back and developing, uh, develop everything from scratch ourselves. Um, Fast Track 2021 appeared to be our first full year on the market, providing a B2B um, technical solution, or what we're providing now. Um, we've been very lucky with our approach, uh, focusing on software. Uh, was very well received with the market, uh, from the market. Um, trends were great. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunate COVID actually boosted the e-commerce industry. And that gave us kind of um, a great uh, kind of uh, boost to the growth. 2022, Vinted happened. Um, I think a project that's really kind of uh, put us on the map. Uh, 2023, DHL trusted us uh, with the software. And um, yeah, we're looking for a very bright future to come. Absolutely. Uh, Joao, you are, you are the mastermind behind the software and the architecture uh, of, of uh, Block IT. Uh, tell me a little bit uh, about what are your challenges right now? Wh where are you now? Because five years has gone and now you are already a scale up. And, and what are the challenges with the software uh, for you now? Uh, well, first of all, it's great being with you guys here. Uh, two industry titans, let's say. Uh, a lot of knowledge about smart lockers and the last month uh, delivery industry. It's not often that you find people like you guys, so it's great to be able to chat a little bit. Just to answer your question, that's actually a great point. Um, when we started, we really dis differentiated ourselves through software, right? That was our big thing, because at the time, no one was talking about it. It was not seen as an important topic. But 
we felt the need for Stan to have a strong software solution. It just didn't exist. And we had to build everything from scratch, uh, starting from the cloud architecture, using a modern you know, technology stack, et cetera, and then evolving from that. And what we quickly realized was, if we couldn't find it, no one else could either. And all these companies were using off-baked solutions. They were investing a lot of money into actually having uh, smart local networks, and a lot of times one of the biggest failure points was just that the software couldn't basically move as fast as the business needed it to move. And so we initially we said, okay, what, what, where do we differentiate software? And we, since the beginning, we've been investing on having the best software solution. What happened since was that we basically start offering more because the software obviously is great, but at the end of the day, you still need to build a lot of locus. And there's still a lot to do on the hardware part, a lot of innovations. People say the industry is getting more commoditized, but I think that's only the case if you're talking about very simple lockers. If you're talking about complex solutions that actually solve issues, that's not the case. We saw that, I guess, with Sweetbox a few years back. They were the first ones rolling out a battery-powered solution, and that was very successful at the time. And the reason why it was successful is because they actually engineered and solved a real issue rather than just trying to replicate what already was on the market. We kind of want to have a similar approach. So we obviously started as a software company, we wanted to be the best, young, you know, new, but now we're still defining ourselves and we want to be the biggest smart locker company in the world. That's our main uh, vision long term. Obviously, software is always going to be key for us because we think that's the secret ingredient that we're far ahead from everybody else. But we also want to be able to provide both good hardware, good software, and good services. Yeah. Peter, back to, back to you. Um, I, um, let's say the partial locker business has been, in this, when it started, it was a locker business and then little, little, little software. Then, then we get some kind of balance, so 50-50 software and hardware. And, uh, and do you see that we are in the phase now that, that the software is actually decoupling from the partial locker manufacturing and they are going separate ways, basically. Yes, I agree. Uh, what I see and, and with my experience in, in, the, in the business, as you said, it was much hardware in the beginning and then a solution on top of that. Then it became more kind of a turnkey solutions uh, around your own network kind of blockers uh, or hardware. And, and now it's, it's more, uh, much more software on top of different kind of uh, hardware, right? So the hardware is not only, you know, the standard powered one, it's also now battery driven, it can be autonomous uh, lockers and so on. So it, the importance of software, it's, it's, it's much more important today than it was three, four years ago. So that's, yeah, I agree. And I can confirm that maybe, maybe, maybe Block IT has been one of the first, or actually the first one who sort of described this as a new standard that software has to be first and has to be agnostic for hardware and for, for carriers. But Miha, let's talk about the, the, the biggest collaboration you, you Put it, put it you on the map with a wind that because this is a this is extremely nice story where two sort of starting companies uh, scaling up their businesses uh, is to the to the large uh, extent. Uh, um, what have you learned from them, or, or, or what is it, what, what they have given to you? I understand what you have given to them as a software and a hardware provider, but but what you have learned from wind that's actually a great question. Uh, I'm, uh, we're still learning from them uh, every day. I, I don't. I wouldn't even know where to start. We're learning from their pace, from how to stay agile, uh, dynamic. Uh, they really, they're very, very demanding. And uh, instead of us trying to kind of uh, box them into something that would be make maybe make us easier for us, um, we're trying to follow uh, their leads and uh, we're trying to support uh, their needs. So. Um, we're, we're learning how essentially to scale uh, a large projects and a large rollout alongside them. Yeah. Uh, Joao, um, one thing you have lately been very famous of that you have, you have been uh, speeding up the rollout of the new installations and, and as I know this is also supported for, from your software side. So your software is not only doing sort of capacity or door opening, let's say. You are, you are, you are supporting the processes in, in installation, in service, in predictions, in these kind of uh, things. 
Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, for us, what we realize is that a lot of companies would like to have the option of having one supplier managing the whole scope of their network. This was the case for Vinted because they were just launching and they worked with lockers in the past, third-party lockers, so they had a lot of experience as a, a provider of uh, you know, the operational services, but not as a, a provider of their own network. It's something they had ne never done before. So they came to us and we were able to really go from A to Z, starting from designing the locker to fit their needs, their parcel size, producing it at scale, different countries in a diversified way, but then also going to these things of, to the extent of deploying lockers, maintaining lockers, making sure the network is working. And we think this is a, a very important component, right? If you're trying to scale your network, you need potentially to deploy fast, right? Uh, Vinted is a case of, is one of the best prime examples of deploying fast and launching quick. Uh, but then maintaining your network is very important. You need to make sure that uh, the lockers are always available to make sure your customers have a good experience. If something goes wrong, you need to be able to fix it fast because one locker down, that could impact a lot of users. So these things are hard to manage and they're even hard to manage when you're trying to do it fast and uh, at scale. So to give you an example, now we're managing close to 2,000 machines across France. We deployed most of these 2,000 machines in one year. Uh, and without having the proper tools to manage this, it would be impossible because it's complex to deploy lockers. It's a, a multi-stage project. You have to find locations. You have to survey these locations, understand what they need. A lot of times you have to do works on these locations to make sure they're ready. You actually have to go to the deployment, activation. It's, it's a really complex project. If you're trying to do 100 a week, like we're aiming at doing now and getting very close to, if you don't have a proper tool to manage that complexity, it's going to be chaotic and you're not going to be able to do it. And what we realized being an agile company and having this strong software you know, background is, okay, we need to help our operational teams on the ground. Let's build nice solutions so that they can do this effectively. Let's do our part. And what we realized, again, the same thing that happened with the smart lockers at the beginning. There was really no tools yet for smart locker deployment and maintenance. But this is a big industry, you know, like there are hundreds of thousands of lockers potentially in Europe that need to be maintained. How can you not have a specialized process and a good set of tools to do that work? So we're also developing a lot of that. Uh, our results have been great. Again, we're deploying close to 100 lockers a week. We have 24-hour SLAs. We're managing uh, maintenance across, I think, 20 different cities in France. Uh, obviously, there are multiple regions there. So it's, it's been a, a really cool experience for us to be able to learn from the teams on the field what are the actual issues and needs and to be able to create something nice that allows them to go faster. Yeah, yeah and just to add on, I, I, I very much agree with you. If you don't have these kind of back-end solutions to support service maintenance, installation, and so, it will just you have an impact on, the, on, on your, your return of investment, right? And, and it's, uh, it's very important. And I think what, what's, what, what differentiates you from some of the others in the market, and I'm not offending them by saying this, but I think a lot of the companies come from the, you can say, the email generation, and you guys are coming from the WhatsApp generation, right? So this means that the, you, you have an understanding of fast communication, fast, you know, you have to do things in, in, in a more faster way, right? And, and this has, yeah, this is very important when you develop the software behind. Yeah, I might steal that one. It's a very nice uh, phrase. <laughs> Very catchy, <laughs> right? Yeah. I can't uh, can't wait. Uh, based on your analogy, when TikTok generation will start deal with the parcel locker, so. But uh, yeah, yeah, and I think that you you are actually right now also in a game changer on you can say the consumers behind the lockers because ten years ago it was more it was you know pick up a parcel, pick up a parcel, pick up a parcel. Then you started to add on returns, kind of as, as a service, but again to you know certain customers. But now it's it's C to C, right? It's it's uh, and it's booming, and and it's a younger generation. And they 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 don't want to have anything which is complex. They it will they will just refuse it. So it has to be easy, lean, and and no doubt downtime on on the lockers. You know you have to be much much faster than than you know five six years ago. So so I, I think it's a it's a challenge, but it's also something that you really need to, you know, to do something about. I'm liking the analogy, yeah. The, the difference is that after WhatsApp, if the TikTok is next, we want to be TikTok as well. So that's, uh, yeah, that's what we're aiming at. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. But uh, back to you, Miha. Um, besides of Vinted, you have another very important, uh, very important uh, client, uh, DHL. This is, um, this is totally different. Uh, client type uh, by their history, demands, behavior, requirements, whatever. 
So tell me about that comparison in a sense. What, what, what have you been learning? What have you been doing for them differently? And what you have been learning from that cooperation? Yeah, so it's definitely a little bit different. Um, co collaboration with DHL, well, we learned a lot, different aspects, uh, more in a sense of how to, um, the execution is different. Uh, it's a little bit more predictable, but at the same time, that much more diligent. So, and uh, I'm really liking the project. So uh, DHL decided to do something that I don't think it's been done in the industry before. Uh, obviously, they've been growing their locker network for many, many years, uh, been one of the pioneers in Europe, really. And uh, across the years, growing it quite aggressively. So what they were doing, they were stacking different hardware providers within their network. And at some point, uh, this network didn't communicate with, within itself uh, as, as they wanted. So uh, what we're doing is something that wasn't done in such a large way. We're applying software on existing locker networks and uh, making sure it's um, unified and standardized within the network. And we're making their life and the life of their careers and everyone working with this uh, local network much easier. So the project's great, really, really liking it and um, working so closely with a company that big, it's uh, yeah, a kind of a blessing for us at this stage. Yeah. I've heard that during those last two days uh, saying that if you can survive uh, Vinted than DHL, then you can survive everything. So, uh, so good luck uh, with, uh, with that one. But uh, Our skin is definitely tougher than it was before these two projects. Yeah. I sure. think we could yeah. have chosen a better mix of partners. On one side, we have a company that's growing super fast, it's super agile, just wants to move fast, break things, do new ways of working. On the other side, we have a company who basically invented a smart locker more than 20 years ago and he's been doing this for a really long time. Already has a lot of know-how, a lot of expertise, uh, knows how they want things done, uh, wants everything perfect. So it's really on it's different spectrums. For us, it's great. We learn to work with both types of companies and I think it actually complements us. Sometimes a little bit hard because when you're changing from one account to the other, <laughs> it just operates differently, but it's been really good for us. Uh, Peter, uh during that conference now, I think that the most expressed word has been sustainability. So everybody expressed that word, I, uh, but I think uh, without knowing exactly what they mean, because this, this is not well-defined word. But, but let's talk about sustainability for a while. The, for you, parcel locker delivery, do you think this is sustainable? Do you think this is the way for the future? Now this is this is some of the if you if you look at, at the you say the communication and, and discussions on LinkedIn and, and and other places, it's one thing where there's a lot of opinions about it. Some say it's not it's not uh, even sustainable to deliver to a locker. Some prefers to have home deliver, and I think it's about what it makes sense. Is kind of is if you break it down to if you deliver one parcel or a hundred parcels for a courier to hundred places, right? compared to having one guy delivering 100 parcels to one location, right? So then it's sustainable from in, in all aspects, right? So if it comes down to that, that then it is a, a more sustainable solution. But I think it is a, it's, it, the sustainability is also about convenience, right? So it's also about combining with convenience and also with it from a financial perspective. It also has to, you know, you, you, can, you can be as green as you want, but it can be very expensive to be green. So it also has to, you know, to have a, impact on the financial side of it. So uh, I think it is, is better. And also now where we see that you start to combine it with uh, with uh, reusable packages, with, uh, with um, the waste disposal, we see a lot of initiatives where you use the lockers for, for this kind of thing. Then I think it's a very, very sustainable solution. What about yeah, that's my I was, opinion? I was about to ask you, what about the sleepers distance that everyone's talking about? Which one? The sleepers distance. The sleepers? Yeah, sleepers. So, so uh, w every time there's a talk about uh, sustainability, uh, they say that it's not sustainable because, sure, uh, a courier dropped 100 parcels, but these 100 people need to use a car still to drive to a locker. So there's a sleepers or maybe a flip-flop distance that needs to be created to make it green. Yeah, but that, let me give you, give, give you an example on that. Norway. Norway has the highest rate of electrical cars, right? So if they take the car to pick up the parcel in, in, the, in the parcel locker, it's done with an electric car. Then right. it's more sustainable than, than, than elsewhere, right? right. So and, and in, then as the 
traffic and cars is going to that direction, it will be more sustainable. I know that if you put in, if you go into a diesel car, and you look at some countries which does have, have a developed infrastructure before for electrical cars, it's just a matter of time. So, so I don't, I don't. This argument, I don't give anything for it, right? And also, it's about density, right? If you have enough walkers, a lot of them will be in residential areas. And People walk, can just walk yeah. there. Or by Simultaneously, bicycle. We're going to, a lot of walkers go to grocery uh, shops, which you, you uh, often go anyway to buy groceries. So we're not technically driving just for the parcel. You're actually, you drive anyway. You just have a different option to do that. So those cases will happen, but I think as density increases, depends on the city as well, obviously, but as density increases, then the environmental benefit is higher. Also, the financial benefit is higher, right? So it's all about density at the end of the day. And another thing, if, if, uh, my own country, Denmark, more and more people start to replace car number two with an electric bicycle, right? Four kids where you can place the kids in front of it and so, and, and this means that the parcels will be picked up by a bicycle, right? So I, this argument is valid in some countries, but in the other countries, it's, it's not even valid anymore. So, But uh, we have been talking about the companies you have been learning, but, but there is also one, one part uh, you have been gained a lot, and this is customers, because uh, you, you have been serving uh, tens of thousands, if not, if not millions of uh, end customers. Uh, what are they telling to you? What, 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 what are the, is it the customer feedback you are ge getting both from, from the Vinted project and DHL project? I think customers are really adopting the solution. Uh, you see a little bit more resistance in the countries, uh, especially in Iberia where we come from. Um, but it's changing everywhere. Um, I think with the density especially. But um, so we have a lot of experience in Vinted uh, locker network growing from from zero and we've visited lockers and we spent time around lockers and we saw so many users and then when we talk to them uh, they say that they were driving to find a locker 45 minutes and sometimes it happens that they, they arrive to locker with three parcels but sometimes there's maybe one compartment left uh, available because when they left the house there were three but that is not anymore so they're willing to drive another 45 minutes to another locker perhaps uh, to drop the other two. So if that doesn't say something about customers adopting or liking the solution, I mean, then yeah. what else, right? We don't talk directly to a lot of our customers because at the end of the day, we're not the network operators, right? So, but from, from the feedback we can see from the data that our partners share with us, we can confidently say that the service is better. People say they prefer it. There are less tickets generating from lockers versus even kudos. Yeah. So it's just a more uniform experience that you can control and people actually prefer it. For me personally, it's always cool when I get to go to Paris, randomly run into one of our lockers and see some people using it. And I just stay there for a few minutes and uh, see people interacting with it. They don't even know who I am. You know, they will never will. I don't even present myself, but it's just a really cool feeling seeing somebody using your product and actually having a good experience. It really, it really pays off. Yeah, I, I actually absolutely agree with you. But um, Joe, I, use, I will stay with you now, and uh, and I would I would uh, propose that the next uh, more exploited term term or a phrase uh, during this conference has been AI. So first sustainability, second AI. Uh, do you see in your software place in the future for an AI, and in what uh, capacity? Sure. It's a good question. So AI is a really big word, broad term nowadays. Uh, everything is AI or nothing is AI for some people. So um, we definitely see some uh, really interesting uh, use cases for AI uh, and machine learning. So one of the things we're developing now more is capacity management because we're building some, well, a lot of open network protocols uh, because some of our partners want to open up their networks and obviously managing capacity between different tenants is a big challenge. One of the ways you have to do that effectively is by leveraging the data that you collect from these uh, partners and then using some models to try to predict what's going to happen. And so if you, if you do things like that, you might be able to get to a point where your cap capacity, you can predict your capacity and make it much more efficient than just reserving things up front. This is one of the main uses I've seen so far. One of the things we're quite excited about exploring. Um, but there are a bunch of other things, like uh, just recently we've been uh, doing a lot of uh, research about the use of certain algorithms around the battery usage on lockers. 
how to make sure that the uh, battery is being properly managed, how to co cor correctly predict the level of uh, battery spending when the locker uh, is operating. And a few of these, you actually need to uh, employ some of these AI algorithms to make sure things work well. But I don't think it's uh, a complete game changer in the industry at this point. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think that AI has a place and then there will be definitely application that will be used in, in partial locker delivery, but, uh, but it's sort of helpers. It's, it's not uh, everything uh, as such. But uh, 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 Peter, back to you. Uh, your, one of your specialties is location uh, scouting or, or finding location for the, for the uh, lockers. Uh, what do you think when, when the lockers are getting smaller uh, by size and they are getting more of them, let's say, at least this is what we see. Do you see this is sort of still manual work or this is also a process that will be automated uh, with AI, with uh, different G GIS systems? I think, I think it will be, uh, I think we, in the future we will see uh, autonomous parcel lockers going out from terminals and, and, and you know, place themselves. But I think I, I, what I more believe in is that that location, the whole location perspective, is getting more and more interesting because there will be less and less of them. The more lockers, the, the more difficult it will be to place uh, to place it. You see, you see in countries where there's a lot of lockers, it will soon be regulated by by the by the governmental and 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 you see also in some countries where municipality has removed lockers and things like. That. So that's that's a, that's a different thing, and you cannot have AI to predict that. That's something else, right? But but I th I think it's it's more it's getting more and more important, and it's getting more and more important to get uh, partnerships with location owners in residential areas, supermarkets, uh, gas stations and things like that, you know, to make sure that you have access to the right places, right? Because the data, the data will tell you where, where the locker should be and there you need to have the right partner for, for that specific location, right? So I think you touched the very right point uh, that, that this openness and the networking and cooperation and that's why I, I do see that Block IT is, is a very sort of open company because you have to be, you have to be open to other uh, different hardwares uh, to different carriers so and and your attitude has to be open not not as a closed one but but starting to wrap up this uh, discussion here uh, giving back uh, to you uh, block IT guys uh, tell me a little bit about the future uh, in a sense we know that you have done you are, you are doing uh, vintage you are doing DHL what you, what, what's next uh, what, whether whether technologically or geographically how much can you reveal? I don't know, but something I would like to get out of you. I'll actually let Joao answer first. Uh, I mean, there we, our team is increasing. People are getting better at their job. We think we have really good technical talent. So we're definitely going to release some uh, cool things moving onwards. We don't want to reveal it too early. But then again, I think we already touched some of these points. Open network protocols is definitely going to be one of the big topics. A lot of work to do there. I think we're very well positioned. We have some very interesting upcoming projects we can't reveal yet around that topic with uh, large companies. Um, I think uh, on the hardware side, the battery powered locker, obviously there was some breakthroughs like Sweetbox and now a lot of people are doing it, but I think there's still a lot of technical challenges that no one has solved. We might have a say in that. You might hear about it very soon. So we don't want to reveal too much, but what I can say is the following. We are going to keep shipping out good products and we are very confident we're going to be the ones uh, dictating the, the pace. Yeah. It's very good. What I could add is that uh, our roadmap for hardware and software is full. Um, and the reason we're going to ship the best products is because our big, big focus is to build the best industry, uh, the best team, not just in the industry, but we want to build the best team overall. So, and we're paying a lot of attention to that. And if we achieve that, then I'm sure that everything that Joao just said, it's going to happen. Yeah. So thank you, gentlemen. Uh, it has been very, very enlightening uh, half an hour talking to you here uh, uh, in Leaders in Logistics Summit and then Block on Tour. Uh, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Joao. Thank you, Miha. Uh, and uh, we will see you next conference somewhere. Yeah. Sounds good. This is great. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. It's great.